Hello everyone, welcome to a new Rebots tutorial about configuring artificial vision with OnRobot Eyes robotic system and universal robots. First of all, you need to connect all the cables following the manual. You can see on the right where to connect every single cable, connect the eyes, connect the compute box, then the M12 uh, inputs outputs, and of course the Ethernet cable to configure the IP addresses. To get into the web client, you will need to connect to the IP address. Uh, we recommend to follow the instructions and leave the three tip switch on. So it's uh, configured to the default of 192.168.1.1. After that, you can just leave the tip switch 4 on and you can DHCP or uh, assign a static IP address. In my case, I put uh, 192, 168, 50 and 205. Okay, to start off, uh, we'll need to configure the robot and we add the packages, the UR caps as they call them. Once installed, the system will reboot and then you will see a toolbar on the top. And now we need to configure the gripper and the tools like the eyes. So we go into initialize robot and uh, select configure PHCP and see if the default is on robot. This is important because the TCP uh, will be done according to these values. So now back to the program, we configure the rest. We go in the installation tab and then configure on robot. Here we can see in the information device that all of our devices are connected. They have been found. And now after that, you need to allow a TCP overwrite. These are the configuration for the eyes in case you put them outside the robot or on the robot, but with light. In addition, you can also add working spaces and works, but uh, we will do that directly in the L program. We double check that the TCP auto is uh, enabled and we go into the configuration for TCP, it's enabled. So now we go back to the program. Here we will add a structure already pre-made by own robot. We will start off with uh, locate ice and inside ice locate tree, we add ice get work piece. And inside this tree, we add a uh, ice pick. So going back to ice locate, we will have to add a, a working area. So we start a new task. We can detect the uh, objects by contour, uh, color and size or interior designs. Let's start with contours. As you can see, we don't have any area pre-selected, so we will add an area. Here we can see it's the end of the our conveyor belt and we have the calibration tool. For this to be able to work and know the distances, you will have to see the green dots in between the white boxes and the black squares. As you can see, you can play a bit with the exposure to see how much light your camera needs. Uh, too much exposure, it's not good. So we select around the between 10 and 30% depending on the brightness in the room. You need to avoid uh, reflections as much as you can and the color should reflect or reality as much as you can. Once done that, you can select next and then uh, get rid of the calibration tool. So you can select the area where the camera will be working on. Now we have the area of the background that the camera will be comparing the objects with and as you can see we have one reflection so we'll try to avoid that when we're training objects to detect so we click next and we can see add workpiece we click on that and we see an area where the camera will focus on in this tutorial we will use this white cube and as you can see it detected the contour quite well uh, so we won't uh, change any configurations and it didn't detect the reflection. So we'll leave that working area as it is. As you can see, you can also play with the height of the object because once you trained with the uh, checkers pattern, it will detect also the distance between the camera to the object. And to make the camera work better, we will uh, make the area smaller. To go next, uh, you have to have a green rectangle over the object that you are training. In this case, you can see the white box, well, the cube, it's a uh, selected green. This is the area where the camera will be working on. So we select all the conveyor belt. If you click on the cog, you can change other parameters like uh, 
where the tool will be getting the object from, like uh, from top to bottom or from left to right. And then also the you can change a bit of the TCP so it uh, doesn't squish the object. Maybe it has a determined height so you can actually manually uh, select that. So inside ice workpiece, we select the object that we had just trained. And then we can see we can obtain three types of variables how many objects of the same type, the position of the objects, and the type of the piece. Inside ice pick, we select a generic code. And then uh, there's uh, some predetermined moves that are already automated. In our case, uh, the robot detects very really well the cube, so there's no need to change any configuration only the diameter of the soft gripper. And as you can see, we changed that. As I was saying before, on road has uh, three different types of functions. One is ice locate, the other one is ice inspect, and the last one is ice landmark. The difference between the first and the second one are the variables provided after the object recognition. As I said before, ice location gives you three variables providing the location, the uh, number of objects and the type of the object. Ice inspection, on the contrary, only gives the quality and position. As the name suggests, it's more focused on quality control. And last but not least, Ice Landmark is a function used to create applications where the robot and the part of its workspace are not fixed to each other. Here we can see an example of Ice Inspect. It's comparing the contour of the object that it's been detected with the object that has been trained. The training is the same as ice location, but the difference here is that you can select the defect tolerance and the shape threshold after finishing the training. As you can see, there's a 100% coincidence with the object that has been trained, but a 50% with the cube that we trained before. If we bring down the threshold, it will allow the cube also to be selected and picked. The command tree is just basically the same as you can see. Uh, look, ice locate and ice inspect are both uh, follow the same pattern. You first choose uh, which function you want to use, then ice get workpiece, and then inside nested, ice pick. Like I said previously, if you need to modify the TCP or the movement uh, from where the direction where you want to pick the object, here are the options. But since it's like a rectangle, it's also no problem and the eyes can see the distance, so it gets the object quite well. This is another example of uh, object recognition by color and size. So we select the option, we put a name of the piece. So we can create another working area, but we choose uh, one we previously used. So tutorial view and here you can see the classic icon to select the color right now it's uh, detecting everything so as you can see we create an area of the conveyor belt and we select the box and later on you can tune the parameters but since it's detecting the box quite well we'll just leave it like that I'll show you the other advanced uh, parameters like uh, color, brightness, and temperature. But basically, it's all just tuning depending on the object. And then you have other configuration just like in the previous steps, which are pretty similar. Uh, just the area of uh, detection, height, and the TCP. As we saw in the video in the beginning, uh, this is what it looks like, the program finished. Now you have a finished beam picking application where the robot automatically looks for the object. And in the corner, we can see an example of our trained model with uh, the white cube and also our hand. So it will get the cube and then it will look for our hand and leave it on our hand. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video, like and subscribe.